Good morning everyone and welcome to our online service of worship. This week it is, can you believe it, the third Sunday before Lent. Hope you've had a really good week. I'm in St Peter and St Paul's in Cherry Willingham. This morning Kate is going to come and talk to us about our gospel passage, which is about us being salt and light in the world. Before we join in some sung worship together, shall we begin with a prayer, the collect for this week. Eternal God, whose son went among the crowds and brought healing with his touch, help us to show his love in your church as we gather together and by our lives as they are transformed into the image of Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> first reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house 
when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, Here I am. If you, rem if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall call for help and he will say, Here I am. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of St Matthew, starting in chapter 5 at verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, 
so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfil. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. May it speak to us afresh. In Jesus' name. Amen. The reading today from Matthew's Gospel may be very familiar to us. Christians are often called salt and light. But what does that really mean to us as Christians in our own place and time? Anyone who has spent significant time with teenagers may think there is plenty enough saltiness in the world to go around. My own teenagers would define saltiness as argumentative. But I think a more positive way of looking at saltiness is a feisty, spirited zeal for some cause or another. A salty conversation may at times be challenging, but essentially it is a passionate expression of a deeply held belief or idea. Today's reading follows the Beatitudes Jesus spoke of in the Sermon of the Mount. You may remember he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Well, he is still on the Mount and this reading is part of that same sermon. After our passage, Jesus will go on to unpack what those Beatitudes mean to his first century followers. In the next passage, Jesus tells the crowd, if you are angry or tempted or unsure how to behave to God and his people, turn to God for guidance and strength. Love God and love his people. So back to today's passage. Jesus has come to tell his followers that they should follow God's laws with their whole hearts. He was angry that the scribes and the Pharisees focused too much attention on the letter of the law, which led to an empty piety. It also led to exclusion, marginalisation and abuse of power. Jesus is telling the people that they are all children of God and so should bring light into the world, not to be part of the darkness. Live your lives fully for God's honour, Jesus is saying, not just to make a show to others of following the law so they can see you being good. Jesus is telling them that God knows when people are full of faith and that he wants a world free of darkness for his people. At the end of our passage, Jesus responds to accusations by some temple leaders that he is a dangerous revolutionary. Jesus tells the crowd that there is nothing new here, and yet there is something revolutionary about the world God desires for humankind and the part we have to play in his plan. At the very start of our passage, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. How can saltiness be restored when it's lost its essential properties? The essential properties are as both a flavour enhancer and a preservative. Jesus is saying you are here to preserve God's kingdom vision and to preserve God's desire for us to reflect his love in the world. In science, salt can be used as a catalyst to make chemical reactions quicker or more effectively. In the same way, God wants us to work with him to catalyse the kingdom mission. 
So what Isaiah was telling us is that empty religion is meaningless. At best, it only serves a person's self-interest. At worst, it leads to oppression. Instead, people of faith should seek to be feisty and have a spirited zeal in loosening the bonds of injustice. I know many of you here already do this in the way Isaiah suggests, for example, by sharing what you have or supporting the work of charities. But I wonder how else we might work with God in our world and communities to help create an image of heaven on earth. I think there is also something about the flavour of salt here. If we lose our saltiness, if we lose our passion and zeal for our deeply held beliefs, how might we get that back? How do we get reinvigorated when we feel a bit washed out and no longer feel like an effective catalyst? One of the beauties of prayer and worship is the way we can find restoration and refreshment in God and in the fellowship we have in each other. It may be through taking communion or through a rousing well-loved hymn maybe chats over coffee with fellow worshippers, or prayer. But turning to God is key. As Isaiah puts it, if we cry out to the Lord for help, he will say, here I am. Jesus goes on to say, you are the light of the world. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a bucket. A lamp is put on a lampstand so that it gives light to the whole household. The household Jesus talks of is everyone that God breathed life into. Jesus was challenging his followers, saying they are the city of God and should stand proudly and boldly like a beacon on the top of a hill. He asks them why they are trying to blend in. Jesus is talking into the present time, not about a far off future or about the end of times. So this message is a call on our lives as disciples in the present, not just a message for his ancient world followers. We are God's lamps burning with the fire of his spirit. If we are not bold in proclaiming our faith in God, it is like putting a bucket over the light God gave to us. A light helps people not to stumble or get lost. If we know someone is fumbling about in the darkness, we will often get out a torch or, a, or, or switch on a light to ease their journey or so they can find a door handle. We might see this as easing the yokes of injustice or shining a light on the gifts of faith so that others may open the door to God. In time, those people will carry their own lights in the world. And that's the, the idea we celebrate when we share the light from the Paschal candle. Being light to God's people also helps us find our own healing and salvation. So how can we be salt in the world? How can we be light in the world? We learn from Jesus in this passage that we are to preserve the message of God's love for his creations. As the world gradually turns away from God and people think they can find joy and hope in their own strength and abilities, darkness and shadows are encroaching. We should keep bringing the light of hope where otherwise there is only darkness. We should light up people's path to salvation by helping them to recognise God in the world. We need to be salty in proclaiming God as sovereign and saviour. We need to share the stories of Jesus to loosen the bonds of oppression that exist in our world so that others can be lit up by God's spirit. We 
need to stand tall in proclaiming our faith. Hiding God's light in us under a bushel or a bucket will not contribute to God's kingdom mission. And he desires our help in that. Being inwardly faithful is only half the story. God wants us to be outwardly faithful as well, to be the preserving salt of his story and the light in this darkening world. So my prayer for us this week is that we reflect on the bushels that are covering God's light in us. Let's spend this week asking God to help us understand why they are there and ask him to lift them from us. I wonder how we could rise to Jesus' challenge in our own lives and communities. Where does the world need salt and light right now? And how can we, through following Jesus, provide it? So let us pray. Father God, we give you thanks for the teaching and ministry of Jesus. We give you thanks for the sustainability sustainment and refreshment that we can find in you. Help us Lord this week to ask you to lift those bushels from us that stop us from shining your light in the world and help us to have the courage and the strength to be the salt in your world. Amen. Shall we pray? 
God of the heavens and the earth, giver of sun and showers, wind and calm, we praise you for your grace and power, your beauty and care. Thank you that there's no season of life when you're not present with us. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we can lean on you when we're weak, weep with you when we're heartbroken, and laugh with you when we are joyful. You care about each moment we live and each anxiety that we feel. And so this morning we bring to you our world, our church and ourselves. We pray for our world. We continue to pray for those countries affected by conflict, for those places with oppressive regimes. We pray today for all those who live in fear, who are unable to access medical care, food or shelter. God of mercy, would you enable aid and relief to get to those in desperate need? We pray for those around the world who bring light, who offer hope in the darkest of situations. Strengthen them this day, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church. We give you thanks for our bishops, Stephen, Nicholas and David, for our archdeacons, Ali, Gavin and Justine, for our partnership deans, Steve and Steve, and for our rural deans, Adam and Penny. As we continue to move forward in this diocese, would you give them wisdom, energy and discernment? Lord God, help them to be creative and spirit-led in the decisions that they make. We pray for the churches in our benefices. We thank you for the people who make up the church. We pray that you would continue to unite us in our mission to be salt and light in these villages. Holy Spirit, may the church be a light on a hill, a lamp shining in the darkness and salt flavouring and preserving a community with your truth, love and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. Jesus, you said we are the salt of the earth. As we go about our daily lives in work, school and home, would you sprinkle us across our villages to bring the flavour of your kingdom wherever we go. As we spend time with you, as we grow in our faith and our relationship with you, Jesus, would you uncover the radiance that was, is within us so that we might shine the truth of your love wherever we go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your light that dispels darkness, that sows rays of joy and hope. It is life-giving. We pray today for all those who are unwell in body, mind or spirit, for those who need a touch of your light and your love. You are the God who heals, who brings comfort and peace. And we ask that today you would surround those in need. In a moment of stillness, we name in our hearts those known to us in need of our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are mourning. We remember, Lord God, those who are no longer visible to us, yet are held in your presence. We pray for all those who are grieving, we pray that in the highs and lows of this week, they might know your presence and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your commission to us to be catalysts in this world, to bring out the God flavours in our communities, to be lights that point to you. This week, may your Holy Spirit refresh and refill us each day so that we may be salt and light to our families, our friends and our communities. Merciful Father, 
accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. kingdom. Final blessing for us this morning. Go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted and honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you and everyone you love, everyone you pray for, today and always. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Do join us again next week. We'll be online and in person. 
Have a great week, whatever you are up to, and we'll see you very soon. Take care. God bless.